Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you seven very cool tricks that we have here in Setup Substance. Some of them are recent additions and some of them are a little bit more technical, but I'm sure you guys are going to appreciate them because you're going to take your textures to the next level. Let's go. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, all that stuff. It's thanks to your support that we can do things like the contest, the portfolio reviews, and all of the things that we have here on the channel. So thank you for all of those who are supporting. And if you're not yet supporting, what are you waiting for? Let's go to Substance Tips. The first thing that you need to change when you're working inside of Substance is this option right here on display settings. It's something so simple, but at the same time, so important. On the shader options, by default, the specular quality that you're gonna be seeing on your objects, meaning how the light is gonna be reflecting from specifically shiny or metal surfaces, is gonna be set to low. And this is a, something that happens very frequently when we export stuff to Marmoset or to Unreal, for instance, the shininess is not exactly there. I strongly recommend that you work at at least at medium, but if possible, all the way to high. And you can see that right there. Like you can see how the frequency or the intensity of the shine really changes. It looks like a completely different asset, right? Because with low, we are just calculating very, very simple values here for the roughness. And it is important to keep this again at high to really see like actually how glossy or how reflective a material is. So make sure to set your specular quality to high. Now, some of you might have missed this announcement a couple of months ago, but Substance Painter made all of the available 3D assets completely for free as long as you have a valid license through the indie license, a studio license, or even the education license. If you're a student or a teacher, you can get access to all of these different elements right here. Not only materials, but also models, HDRIs, everything. Before they released all of this, the only way you could get access to everything was by buying a complete package. But now, even if you have the basic stuff, just substance, 3D designer, and things like that, you're gonna be able to get all of this ones right here. And the reason why these guys are so good is because a lot of them are actually captured with photogrammetry. So these are, real materials from the real world that they've captured and properly gave all of the properties, right? Like the calibrations that we need to be able to use them inside of Substance. So again, if you have a license, make sure to make good use of all of these assets. Some of these assets might be a little bit heavy and on data, right? Like they're a little bit uh, expensive in terms of uh, performance or storage. This one is like 200 megabytes. Just keep in mind that the more complex the material is, the heavier it's gonna be. Usually it's not gonna give you such a big impact on the layer creation or on the texturing process, but just keep in mind. Once you download the material, the only thing you need to do is drag this into your library. I normally like to save this to my library so I can use it anytime, and here we go. Now that we have the material, we only need to drag and drop it, and boom, it's right here. Let's go to the third tip, which is displacement. This is something that I don't use all the time because normally in games, we're not using that much displacement. It can be used, but it's not something super common. And what I'm gonna show you here is how to properly see the displacement within Substance. Very easy. First thing you need to make sure is that your object has the height channel activated. We need to make sure that there is height information going on. Remember, height will tell us which points need to be pushed up and which points need to be pushed down. This works with a three-dimensional object as well. I'm using this ground plane just because it's a little bit easier to showcase but you can do this with whatever option or whatever model you want. If you go to the shader settings again, remember where we had the specular quality, down here we're gonna have the displacement effect. As you can see, the source channel is our height information. Technically, if we have a displacement channel, like a material that has a specific information on the displacement channel, we can select that one as well. And we can change the scale. So this one will tell us how, how intense or how soft this effect is going to be. Then we can use this option. We can either use uniform or edge length and both of these options are gonna allow us to tell Substance how specific or how precise we want this displacement to be. Edge length is a little bit more, I believe it uses more like triangles and uniform is just like a subdivision. So as you can see, if we go to edge length, we get a little bit of a sharper result. This is something that you're gonna have to calibrate once you go into your main render engine, whether it be Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine or Unity, you're gonna have to change this there. But it's very, very cool that we can actually see the surface being displaced on the object and we can potentially again texture anything that we want. Displacement mass, very very important. Keep in mind these are a little bit performance heavy so if your computer is on the low end side of things then you might struggle if you want to push this a little bit high. Now this next tip that I'm gonna show you, I'm actually a little bit sad about it because I made a video like two years ago on how to do the whole process and they now have automated it. But again, I'm sad because that video might not get as many views now, but I'm happy because it makes it so easy for us now. And of course I'm talking about stickers. So very recently they added this new thing right here. It's called custom sticker. And the only thing you need to do is drag and drop this wherever you wanna place your sticker and boom, we're gonna have this black square right here. Now, if we go here to the black square, we can actually go to the options 
here on custom image and we can load in our image. To do that, of course, we need to import our image. It's very important that this is a transparent element. So I'm importing this one right here, it's a PNG. I'm just gonna say uh, texture. And for now, I'm just gonna keep it on the current session. I'm just gonna hit import. It's underneath my camera, but it's just the PNG image. And we just drag and drop that and drop it on the custom image. And there you go. Look at that. It automatically cuts out the form. And as you can see, it respects all of the information. It even has this like interesting wrinkles on the sticker. And there's a lot of things that we can do right here. For instance, uh, the outline, we can change the outline. Right now it's a, it's a white color. We can change this to a black outline, for instance. The material, we have things such as the roughness. If we want this to be very flat, very sort of like a bland or if we want this to be extremely extremely shiny look at that that looks beautiful right and the cool thing is remember we have this three little things right here this is for position so we can move this around this is for rotation we can rotate the sticker around and this is for scale we can also scale the, the sticker around if you start getting this thing right here that's the depth of the object right so we need to go back to position and play a little bit more with the depth to really make sure that it's like covering the stuff that we want to to cover now another very cool thing about this procedural like sticker like generator or this custom sticker is that we have options such as wear and tear we can start adding a little bit of edge wear for instance there on the corners we can add some false density right or remove it completely if we want like a super super smooth uh sticker we can add a little bit of damage right like tearing of the of the whole thing the intensity of the damage so it's it's so much easier now. <laughs> like this setup is of course like 10 times better than the one that I show you. The one that I show you was only to cut and have control over the roughness. This is like, if you were gonna be adding stickers, this is the way you need to do it now. Another very cool filter that I added not too long ago is the embroidery filter. This is very good for patches, right? If you're doing like a sci-fi character or something that has like a lot of like patches, a backpack, a, I don't know, a bag or whatever, you can use this one right here. So I'm gonna drag and drop it right here. And the first thing I need to do is change the projection to warp projection. The warp projection is the same one that we used before. And once we have this, we can, for instance, rotate this and let's move it so that it's being projected on this side of the character. There we go. Again, just make sure that it fits or is projected in the proper direction. And as you can see, it's already giving me like this sort of like pattern effect, right? Like this lines, this embroidery effect that we now need to replace with an image. I've downloaded an image here, like a NASA patch, very common. And if we go here to embroidery and we go all the way to the image patch, boom. There we go, look at that. So again, very, very easily, we can just get this in here and start playing with the effect. Remember that if this thing is disappearing, we need to sort of like push this thing until we find a proper position. And look how nice that looks. Imagine how long it would take to either model this or bake it or sculpt it inside the Seabrush. It would just be impossible, right? Well, not impossible, but it would take quite, quite a bit of time. So I really like these new filters or these new procedural effects that what they're doing is pretty much they're taking the information from an image and using it to generate all of these patterns and all of these effects. So now that shoe looks a little bit nicer thanks to this element right here. There are things that we can do here. We have the stitch finish. So we have same stuff, roughness, if we wanna make the stitch a lot glossier, right? A lot more like plasticky. We wanna make it a little bit matter. Uh, we can make this metallic if we want to. There you go. Of course, in this case, if you're gonna do metallic, I recommend keeping the roughness down. Look at that. We can change the anisotropy. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. And uh, yeah, I mean, in general, like there's again, a lot of things that we can do. We have this option right here, color, that we can change and adjust. But in general, I think that usually by default, we're gonna get a very, very nice result. If you combine this with stickers and with some of the other tricks that I'm about to show you, well, you're gonna have some really, really nice, interesting and complex textures. Let's go to the next one. Sometimes when we're texturing assets, we like to go online and look for interesting textures that we can use because yes, it's always cool to use procedural stuff. It's very fast, it's very efficient, but every now and then we wanna be a little bit more specific, right? The problem is that when we drag and drop, for instance, an image right here, we only get access to one of all of these channels to sort of like paint on. So if I go, for instance, base color here, yes, I'm gonna be able to add this thing right here, definitely scale this, probably rotate it, right? To get some interesting effect going. And of course, play with something like a blending mode to either multiply this or overlay it, right? And get some interesting effects going. We can even add, for instance, a white mask here and use some of our brushes to erase a couple of elements, right? Just, just blend it a little bit nicer. Yeah, this looks interesting. It's gonna definitely help sell the effect of something that's a little bit more realistic. That could be, I don't know, blood or whatever. The point is that if we go into the other channels, right? If we go, for instance, into the high channel or if we go into the roughness channel specifically, we're not gonna be able to have that information. Like that amazing variation that we would expect to have from this, it just looks like a wallpaper, right? Like one of these things that all houses used to have. And, and it just looks very fake. Here is where we can use 
anchor points, but in a slightly different way. I'm gonna right click on this layer and I'm gonna generate an anchor point. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new layer. This is gonna be a roughness layer. It's only gonna be affecting the roughness of the whole thing. And then on the roughness, I'm not gonna select any like element right here. I'm gonna go to the anchor points and I'm gonna grab the anchor point that we just created. So what this is doing is pretty much saying, hey, give me that color information and let me convert it into roughness information. So here on the reference channel, we want to change this to base color and look at that. So now what is happening is we're taking the information again from the color of the rust layer through an anchor point and we're flipping that information to make it a roughness channel. Now, that's not all. Again, if we go right now into the roughness, you're gonna say that, okay, this is way too dark, meaning that's gonna be way too shiny and we want the opposite. So no big deal. Right click on this thing, we add a levels and we say, hey, I only want you to affect the roughness channel. And what do I want you to do? Inverted, of course. And there we go. So now we have control through these levels about all of the information that we have on the original color channel of our element. Pretty cool, right? So this is pretty much, again, it's it's just like switching and sending information from one layer to the other through the anchor points. A lot of people think that anchor points are only used to extract like the normal or the height information for details. You can also move information around. Normal map information, roughness information, color information, you can move it around thanks to the anchor points and utilize it or flip it or just make a mess with this and just generate something that looks very, very interesting. Now, the reason why we did a fill layer is so that we can control the overall roughness, okay? So for instance, let's say I like something like that. Like that looks quite, quite nice, I would say. Now, we can also add another fill layer in this case, make this a height layer and do the exact same thing. Go to the rusty metal, grab the information from the base color and look at that, we're extracting. It's not gonna be as pretty, I'll give you that. It's not gonna be like perfect, but it's gonna give us a little bit of height information here that's gonna modify specifically or more precisely the normal map information. Here, I would definitely recommend again to add levels, go to the normals, go to the height here, and just sort of like soften it up or just break it up a little bit so that it's not as intense. But for instance, if we want this thing to push in a little bit more and we're extracting all of this information from a single image, from the single map of the image. This is by the way, what we used to do back in the day in, instead of Photoshop, when we're doing with like, when we're texturing without Substance Painter before Substance Painter existed, this is how we created the maps. We started with a base color and we used that base color information to generate all of the different elements. The thing that we might be able to sort of like smoothen this out and there we go. So look at how much more interesting this looks thanks to the fact that we have a field layer that's extracting the roughness and a field layer that's extracting the height all thanks to anchor points if you haven't seen the anchor points video i strongly encourage you to check that one out here as well in the channel because i explain how you can use that one for normal and height sculpting very very useful now let's go for the final tip for today. Now this final tip is a little bit technical, but it's very important that especially as you move forward in your career, you understand how this channels work. So when we're finished, this is door of course from our Substance Painter course. When we're finished with our character and we're ready to export all of the textures, it's very important to go here to file export textures and understand this output templates. By default, you're normally gonna be exporting in PBR metallic roughness or you're gonna be exporting in Unreal Engine Pact. One of these are, again, the common things that we use. But sometimes some studios will ask you to create the specific elements or specific templates that you're gonna be using. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna create a new template right here and I'm gonna call this the Abe Leal template. And let's say we want a texture that has the color information, right? Like the, the diffuse color of our character. The only thing I need to do is go here, add an RGB element, and then here on this RGB option, we need to get in the diffuse information. So I'm gonna grab diffuse and just drag and drop it right there. I'm gonna say RGB channels, there we go. So now this texture right here is gonna be called RGB. I'm gonna explain how we can rename that in just a second. And it's gonna export the information that we want. We can already set this to something like target, for instance, it's gonna give us a little bit of a better result. We can do um, eight bits so it's gonna have, um, it's just gonna be a little bit better. And then we can select the flags. The flags are the names of the object. So if I select flag mesh or that little dollar sign mesh, it's gonna have the name of the object. I believe this is called dwarf head. And then I can do, for instance, underscore and add another flag and say, it's gonna be, let's say, a UDIMS, right? If we were using UDIMS, it's gonna select this specific UDIMS that we're gonna have. And then we can add another one, for instance, and say, I also want this to be texture set. So the name of the material that this object was imported with. In this particular case, I don't remember like what material I gave inside of Maya, but it was probably dwarf body or something like that. So by doing this, what's gonna happen now, if I go here to the list of exports, it's gonna be exporting door body and dwarf chest base color, all of that information. And so like my element, there we go. And on the list of exports, there you go. This is the name that's gonna get, it's door, 
underscore is the name of the character, body underscore M dwarf underscore chest, and then door body M dwarf head. So this is how we build up our own sets. What I'd like to do is if I want to create something that's a little bit more complex, for instance, let's go to the Unreal one, we go here to Unreal Engine Pact, we can add more elements. We can add more stuff here to the basic uh, template. For instance, let's say we want to add one more texture that includes some of the useful maps that we normally extract from a character. I'm gonna use the R plus G plus B because I wanna have a specific map on each of these specific elements. And this one, I'm just gonna copy the whole name of this thing right here. Instead of calling it vase color, I'm just gonna call it special maps or whatever. So what I can do is say, hey, what if I want to have, for instance, the curvature information, right? The curvature map that we baked in. We know it's a black and white map, right? Peaks and valleys. So what I can do here is I only need to drag and drop the curvature into the R channel. I'm gonna say gray channel, there we go. So the curvature is now on this red channel. What if we want the thickness, right? to know what parts are thicker and what parts are thinner. That could go on the green channel. And for instance, we could always include something like the scattering, right? Like the scattering layer that we have on this character, and we can have that on the gray channel as well. So now, as you can see, we have this specialty map that is giving me more information and therefore more control on the shader side of things. Let me export everything real quick so that you guys can see. Make sure that when you check here on your list of exports, whatever change you added is also present. So for instance, here you can see that I'm again using the basic Unreal Engine packed map, and I'm gonna have my special maps here under the options. And if we open, for instance, this special map right here, look at this, it's gonna look very weird, right? This one looks green and purple and everything, but this is because we have, again, information on all of the other channels. Red channel, look at that, curvature map. We can use this inside of Marmoset, inside of Unity, inside of Unreal or Maya or Blender. We can use this to extract information or get different results with our shaders. We also have our thickness map, right? Very, very interesting thickness map that tells us what parts of the character are thicker and what parts of the character are thinner. And finally, the scattering map. This is a map that we actually painted and during the course we talk about how to do all of this that tells us the specific areas where we really want the subsurface effect to be happening quite heavily. So you can see there's a little bit more on the nose, a little bit more on the lips, a little bit less on the scars and on the blood because we don't want those elements to look like they're scattering light. So this is specialty map, the only way you're gonna be able to create it is by making it yourself. And you can do combinations of a lot of things. The only thing you need to remember is that you need to be very mindful of whether a specific channel that you're adding here is an RGB channel, right? It has color value, color information, or if it's a black and white channel, like a mask or like opacity, things like that. You will learn this. You can, of course, just Google which uh, kind of like maps each one of these are. And if it's a single map, if it's a black and white map, you can split it into the different channels. If it's a color map, like the diffuse, like the normal map, then you probably do want to include it here on an RGV channel. One little last note right there, if you have opacity, I don't have any opacity on this character right now, but if you have opacity, you can add an alpha channel and add the information of the alpha channel there as well. So that's it, my friends. Those are some of the tricks that I wanted to share this time around about Substance. Of course, there's way, 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 way more information that you can learn. We have the Substance course in case you wanna check it out. I'm gonna leave it here on the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope your time with Substance is very, very fun and I can't wait to see all of the amazing things that you're gonna be creating. So that's it for now, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. And don't forget, always learning, always improving.